what is up guys ryan here with creativegrenade.com and in today's after effects tutorial i'm going to be showing you guys some basic keyframing techniques so hopefully you get you more familiarized with the program as well as maybe inspire you to start doing motion graphics because it can be a helpful trait for any designer to have uh, both as a freelancer and as in commercial use so uh, let's jump into after effects and let's get to work now I have a quick preview set up for you guys to help you guys understand and visualize what's going on when you use certain kinds of keyframes. Um, so if I do a quick preview, um, you can see that each one of these circles is um, is going back and forth, but each one of them is set up a little bit differently. Uh, now each one of these uh, circles are set to a duration of two seconds, so they all meet up at point A and point B at the same time, but how they get there is a little bit different. Um, so for the red box, it's just set up with normal linear keyframes, nothing fancy to it. It's just what you do right out of the box when you go to keyframe something. So obviously when it's, it starts over here at point A and ends at point B and then back to point A. So um, as you can see here, each one of these are set up with three different keyframes. First, we have the starting point, which is over here. And then this middle point is over here on the far right side. And then the third point is going back to point A. So it goes point A, point B, and then back to point A. So it's like I said, all these are meeting up at the same time, but just how they get there is differently. So this, there's nothing going on here. It's going on a straight path. There's no uh, sun and acceleration. There's no decel acceleration. It just gets there and that's it. Um, now for the green one, it's uh, similar to the linear keyframes, but it's eased in a bit more. So if you see that it goes in at a faster pace like it, it goes off before the red one or it gets to the middle point a little bit faster and that's because uh it's set up with easy ease or ease in or easy ease in or out my mistake and uh it's pretty much doing exactly as you see here it's like a roller coaster you know it goes up it builds up it builds up and then it comes back down so it goes it starts off faster then slows down and then comes down off the hill and it just meets up a little bit nicer towards the end so when you use easy ease in and out it's making the animation just a little bit smoother and not so harsh and just very linear and straight like the first one up here um, so when it comes to when it meets up at uh keyframe number a and keyframe b not <laughs> number a that's <laughs> um when it meets up at keyframe a or b you see it kind of eases itself into here and that's you know hence the word easy ease it's easing itself into that keyframe so it's more of a it's a less harsh way of moving into a new transition or whatever and you should really use easy ease on uh, a lot of stuff because it just it's you're not going to have this very linear movement up here and it just makes it look better if you're looking to do something really quick and i'll show you guys how to set all this up in a moment um but for the third one you can see here it's really cool really smooth and nice um and it goes off really cool so it jolts off and it jolts back but like i said all these meet up at two minutes or two seconds at the same time so while this is going faster it slows down um right before it hits those anchor points or you know the keyframes so it's kind of like easy ease but you were kind of modifying it more in a way by using the graph editor so uh, normally without using the graph editor you want to be able to get these kind of curves and using the graph editor can really help you get these dynamic animations and you can see here while this is going fast it just feels so much nicer um it's like it's just easing into those keyframes a lot smoother and just the overall smoothness of it just feels really nice it doesn't feel linear like this one but then also uh just feels a little bit more organic than the middle one here so uh just like all the other ones it starts off slow it comes up to this curve and then it drops down really fast so it goes jolts and slows down into each keyframe and it just looks really nice and uh the graph editor is something i've been uh, i haven't used a lot of um, but in the last couple of months, I've been really trying to get the hang of because it's, it really does help. You know, before I used to just use easy ease in and out. And um, I was like, oh, you know, that'll be good. But as you can see, using the graph editor, you can just get these really dynamic motions and it looks really nice. So I'm going to uh, jump into a new project file right now. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to use these effects or uh, apply these keyframes. So, yeah. Alright, you're going to go up here to File, New, and hit New Project. And that's going to give us a clean slate. And then we're going to go up here to Composition, New Composition, or hit Command N or Control N if you're on Windows. 
And it's going to bring up this dialog box of for the composition settings. We're just going to change the width to 1280 by 720. Make sure the frame rate's at 30 seconds. Normally it's at 29.97, but we're going to keep it at 30. And for the duration, we're going to keep it at two seconds because that's how long our circle was before. And we're going to just make the background color white. And you can also hit this little preview icon down here. And that's going to give us a preview of what it's going to look like right now. My computer's for some reason lagging i think whatever wasn't doing a ram preview for some reason uh but once we have that set up we have our full two seconds here and what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and grab our eclipse tool normally it's selected to our rectangle tool but if you want to access the eclipse tool or any of the other ones you just click and hold down and then go to the eclipse tool now we're going to drag out and hold shift so we can get a nice uniform scale and what we're going to do is we're just going to click and then once you have that, sometimes the anchor point uh, ends up not in the center of our circle here. And we want this anchor point right here to be in the circle. So if you want to do that, you can just hit Y and that's going to bring up this little icon next to our cursor. And we're just going to drag this in the center of our circle. It doesn't really matter where it's at. As long as it's close to the center, that should be good. And uh, we're going to come down here to our comp one layer. And we're just going to right click on our uh, shape layer and rename it to circle uh, red circle. So we can just navigate our timeline a little bit easier. Um, we're going to make sure this is centered up in our composition by going to our line tab and clicking the center button. Um, if you don't have that, you can go up here to window and align and make sure it's checked and it should pop up somewhere on your canvas. Um, now, normally the, uh, your shape layers or really whatever is going to be collapsed. And if you want to open it, you just click on this triangle button here and then it's going to open up contents and a whole bunch of other things. And then we're going to open up the transform because that's what we're working with. And it's going to bring up a couple things, anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. Today, we're just going to be working with the position, uh, the position tool. And we're just going to be doing just like we did in the preview, going from point A to point B. Um, so we're just going to add a keyframe at zero seconds. Make sure that uh, the timeline cursor is at zero seconds. And then we're going to go to the middle uh, in the middle of two seconds, which is about uh, I forget how many frames that is. Um, but we're going to do right there. Uh, actually, no, wait, my mistake. We're going to go all the way to the end at two seconds. And then we're going to drag our position all the way out to the right. And right there, it looks about good. And then it's gonna add another keyframe here. And if you go over here to our comp layer again, all the way over here to the left, you can navigate our keyframes. And this can be helpful when you have a lot of keyframes, you wanna navigate them a little bit easier. So now once you're back at, um, uh, at two, or uh, two seconds by mistake, we wanna go back to zero. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to draw it all the way back. So. I'm going to actually drag this back to the center, go to two seconds, and then we're going to just drag this all the way back to where it was originally. So like that. Now if we do a quick preview, the, like I said, these are just the linear keyframe, uh, nothing special. So we have point A, point B, yada yada, nothing special. But now we're going to add the easy ease and easy ease out keyframes. So for the first keyframe we're going to select, or like I said, you can navigate your keyframes like this. So we're going to go to the first keyframe down here in zero seconds. We're going to right click it and you know it's highlighted when it turns blue. But if sometimes if you're on CS6 or below, it's going to turn yellow. Uh, but we're going to right click on it and then you're going to bring up this little uh, dialog box and we're going to go down here to keyframe assistant and then hit easy ease in. And that's just going to ease it on in. Um, so if you're starting at the beginning of the keyframe, um, as for this one is you want to do it as the easy ease in if you're going to the end of a keyframe or the end point You want to make sure it's easy ease out So for the middle one since it's going over here to point a we're gonna make it easy ease out and Same for this one easy ease out. So if we do a quick preview Once it previews you see it's a little bit we get in a little bit of a smoother transition between both A and B and you get a, it just like I said before, it just eases into that keyframe. Um, so using these, uh, using easy ease in and out, it's really helpful and will help create a little bit of a smoother animation for you. Now to make it a little bit more realistic, 
um, you can add some motion blur to it. So if we go up here, make sure our red circle is still selected and you can click the enable motion blur. Now, if we were to RAM preview it, you're like, oh, okay, we have motion blur on, but technically it's not on yet. You actually have to enable it in the layer panel over here. And if you see here, we have our motion blur enabled, but you also get it down here. So you have to, it has to simulate, uh, just because you have it on, doesn't mean it's simulating on the red circle. Um, so you can just click that and I'll add the icon. And now if we do a RAM preview, now we get some nice motion blur and it just adds a little bit of, uh, it just makes it look better and a little bit more of a realistic uh, movement back and forth. Um, now, if you don't have the motion blur thing enabled, you can go down here to toggle switch, uh, toggle switches slash modes and you can toggle that off and on. So normally it's sometimes it's like this, um, but you can just switch it back and then you can enable the motion blur, etc. So there you go. We have that. Um, so there we go. Let's just do another quick RAM preview, give you an idea. So there you go. The motion blur and the easy ease just makes it really nice and smooth. So yeah. So now we're going to be working with the graph editor. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate this by hitting control or command C, command V, and that's going to duplicate our thing. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the color of this to a blue, like so. And we're going to rename this to blue circle. And once we have that, we're actually going to turn off our red circle for now because we're done with that. And like I said, so this has the same properties as it did with the red circle. Um, but now we're going to be working with the graph editor. So if you want to work with the graph editor, you go over here to our timeline and then you're going to get this little icon and it says graph editor. Once you click that, you can see we get this nice graph and it shows exactly what's being shown on here. If we open this up, let's open this up again. It's showing exactly what's on here just in graph form. So you get, you know, point A, you get the center point and then point B. And you can see where the easy ease is coming in. So if, like I said, for the linears, as you saw before, the linear keyframes were just straight. But the uh, when we add this easy ease, you could see it adds like this kind of slight bevel to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to start manipulating this in a way that we feel that will give it more of a smooth animation. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure our blue circle is selected and we're going to make sure that all three of our anchor points are selected here by holding shit, clicking on them and holding shift. And you see it adds, uh, you know, we can manipulate it as such in the keyframe. You know, if we move it up and down, it can move the position, etc., etc. Uh, but what we're what we need to do is we need to add some anchor points to it So if we click this down here, which is separate dimensions, it's gonna actually bring up um, And give us some anchor points just like you would see in Illustrator or Photoshop It's gonna give us some anchor points that we can manipulate the line so uh, If we were to play this back out now, we kind of lost a little curve to it. You know, we have a little bit here um, but we wanted to give it a nice smooth entrance. So what we're going to do is for the smooth entrance, we're going to drag this out and it's going to just give it this nice long canyon. Now, if you wanted to get a, a nice straight uh, parallel line, you can hold shift and it'll give you a nice straight line. So if we do it right about there, it's going to give us just this nice slope. So if we do a quick ramp preview, you can see that we have this really nice slope and then it goes really fast. Um, you can also just, you know, Really, the fun thing about using a graph editor, you can just really manipulate it to it works and you can just do some crazy things. So if we want this nice, smooth, uh, like roller coaster thing, so it goes up and then it comes back down and just have this really cool, smooth, nice animation and it looks really nice. Um, so, you know, messing around with the graph editor is just you know, really fun. I can spend a couple hours just messing around with stuff. Um, but you know, that's really all there is to the graph editor. You know, there's, there's a ton of other stuff you can do. Um, but you know, for the sake of this tutorial, I just wanted to show you guys, uh, you know, just the basics of how everything works. So if we do another RAM preview, you see it comes up to this point, it kind of reaches its climax and then it comes back down. It kind of almost looks like it's bouncing back and forth. It looks really, really nice. Um, so that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
um, and I hope it inspires you guys to start using After Effects more because a lot of people see this as a foreign program and they're like, oh, I'm a designer, I don't really need it. But it can be really helpful and a lot of employers look for people that have a little extra skill sets because you know if you're on a team of people and you need some type of simple animation or really whatever and no one else can do it and you say you can or at least you know the program you could you know that looks really good and it should really benefit you um so definitely get out there and start you know messing around with after effects it's really fun and you won't regret it so um if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to click that subscribe button to receive more videos just like this. And if you're not following us on Twitter, be sure to follow us at Creative Grenade for giveaways and a whole bunch of other stuff. Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.